Both EPS and precast concrete wall panels are alternative building technologies. This means that they try to improve on the conventional building materials such as bricks and machine cut stone blocks, for example. In this video, we'll take a look at these two technologies but from a different point of view. We'll explore the five factors that differentiate EPS and precast concrete wall panels. To make the video more concise and helpful, we'll assume one thing, that you're on the verge of building or planning to build your house using either of these two alternative building materials for walling purposes. Something worth mentioning, this video doesn't show the advantages or disadvantages of these two materials, but rather it's an attempt to help you see the differences between the two to help you make an informed decision for your project. With that, let's run the intro. Hi, I'm Nick Moema from Property Norma. So let's start with the first differentiating factor, concrete. Both panels require concrete to achieve structural strength. Where they do differ, however, is with their application. With EPS panels, you buy the required amount from the factory and you transport them to your site. Once they're installed on your foundation, for example, concrete is applied to them. You can use a short grit sprayer to quickly and evenly ap apply the concrete, or if you don't have the budget for that, you can apply the concrete manually. It's a labor-intensive process which has to be done because EPS panels by themselves don't have any strength. We look at the design later on in the video. With precast concrete wall panels, they come pre-plastered with concrete. That's the unique selling point of these panels. As a customer, you simply buy them and you transport them to your site. It's only a matter of erecting these panels on site. You don't need to do any plastering as that is already taken care of. You'll also buy an important accessory called a steel C channel that holds the panel both at the foundation and at the top of your house. I talked about this accessory in my previous video on concrete wall panels. Click the card that appears now to learn more. Now that we've looked at the concrete factor, Let's proceed to factor number two, which is dimensions. We'll start with the widths, then proceed to the thicknesses of both panels. The EPS wall panel has a width of 1.2 meters. With precast wall panels, the width of a single panel is 0.6 meters. As you can see, this is, the, this is half the width of an EPS wall panel. This means you install two precast panels for every EPS wall panel. You need to take that into consideration. With EPS wall panels, their thicknesses vary from 40 mm up to a maximum of 140 mm. The recommended thickness for EPS walls is 80 mm, which is right there in the middle of the thickness range. The thickness of a precast panel is 90 mm. That's the standard thickness and, the, and there's no range to choose from. For both panels, the height can be customized to fit your needs. Height isn't a differentiating factor as it's something that they both share a similarity. The maximum height for both is 3 meters. Next, let's look at the third differentiating factor, time. Time is so valuable in construction. If you can find a way to save time, you're able to meet your deadlines and also remain on budget. Remember this, the smaller the building material, the more time it will take to finish construction. Because of their larger size, both technologies, when compared to bricks or stone blocks, offer major time savings. That's why they're gaining popularity in Kenya. But when we compare the time factor between the two technologies, a major difference appears. That difference 
is the installation time. Since a precast concrete wall panel is a finished product, it's only a matter of erecting them on site. You can install them and go straight to painting if you want. With EPS wall panels, you have to install them and then apply concrete later on. The application of concrete adds more time that precast panels save. I hope you get the point. Now, let's look at the fourth factor, which is design. Let's begin with EPS panels. EPS stands for Expanded Polystyrene Sheet. This is the white stuff you see on the panels. It's very light, greatly reducing the weight of EPS wall panels. The work of Expanded Polystyrene is to provide a thermal and soundproofing barrier for the panel. That's why it's at the center of the panel. With a precast concrete wall panel, the design philosophy is different. There are hollow circular openings that run throughout the panel. Their job is providing thermal regulation and soundproofing to your house. This job was done by expanded polystyrene on EPS wall panels. That's the difference. Another design difference is in making the panels lighter. How do these panels try to reduce the weight of your house? With EPS panels, it's with the use of expanded polystyrene. And with precast concrete wall panels, it's with the use of hollow circular openings. Another design difference is the connection feature. What I mean here is how each panel connects to the next one. The galvanized steel mesh of EPS panels overlap each other and because of that they can be tied and joined to each other using a binding wire. Precast panels have an interlocking groove that helps them kiss each other. This feature provides a seamless joint between two panels. Both precast and EPS panels have galvanized steel mesh to provide reinforcement. This adds more structural strength to the panels. With precast panels, the steel is embedded inside, while with EPS wall panels, the steel mesh is exposed, surrounding the expanded polystyrene. And last but not least, the fifth differentiating factor is cost. Since EPS panels come in various thicknesses, we'll stick to the 80mm thickness, which is recommended for walls. Also, because the cost varies depending on the height you want, we'll pick the 3 meter height, which is the maximum height for both panels. An EPS wall panel meeting these two restrictions costs on average 5,000 shillings, while a precast concrete wall panel costs on average 2,200 shillings. Remember, you'll need two precast panels for every EPS wall panel. That brings the cost to an average of 4,400 shillings. And since precast wall panels are a finished product, you don't incur additional costs on plastering. This means that precast concrete wall panels in general are a cheaper building material than EPS wall panels. Both EPS and precast concrete wall panels are great alternative building technologies. Their different design approaches make them unique in their own way. But they still have to fight an invisible enemy called perception. Most people pre still prefer bricks or stone blocks to build their homes. Why? Because they are so common, cheap, and universally adopted in Kenya and most fundis are familiar with bricks or stone blocks, making it difficult for EPS and precast panels to be easily integrated within the construction industry. But the market for these two technologies is steadily growing, and maybe in the future, they'll be as popular as stone blocks. If you're in the market for these two EBTs, I've left links in the description to companies manufacturing and selling these panels in Kenya. I hope you found this video useful. Consider hitting the like button 
to help it reach more people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.